Welcome to July Set News. My name is Rob. And today, just like the thumbnail and title suggests, it's time to take the kid gloves off and stop micro DCAing and just go straight DCA. And to really get a feel of why that is, we have to do a little bit of a timeline, a little uh, take a look back. And this was a video that we did in uh, not too long ago. It was micro DCAing. This is the one where it started all off. This was on uh, May 23rd, 2022. And uh, we had talked about how because of what the market is doing, it seems a little bit unstable. We felt like there was more of a cliff and things were going to drop off. And uh, what I did was I said, instead of me just stopping DCAing altogether, because I was buying crypto a little bit uh, in, in the past, but it was a very sporadic. It wasn't like what I was doing in, in 2019 and 2020. It just felt very odd. So I just said, okay, I'm going to get everything in line. I'm going to start micro DCAing, which is a percentage uh, less of what I would normally dollar cost average into. So if I was buying, say, Bitcoin for you know $200 a day, I'm only going to do $20 per day. And the same thing was with altcoin. So that was on May 23rd, 2022. And you can check this. There's a link in the description. And I got to tell you, on May 23rd, it was actually a pretty good time to start doing that. We were at uh, 30,000, uh, roughly, or doing 29,000. That was the opening and the close, so 29,000 on May 23rd. And we're going to see that it actually was pretty stable for eh, about a week, week or so. And then all of a sudden, we just saw it go from 29 to 28 to 26 to 22 to 20,000 to 19,000. So we were a little bit more consistent with the buys. And that was that's the whole thing with dollar cost average. You would see we were actually there for <laughs> quite some time. Now, I'm not good at timing the market. I'm not perfect at that. But if I get somewhere you know, around close, I'm pretty happy. So what I was doing was just uh, buying along the way and it was just $40 per day of Bitcoin and uh, doing some uh, buys of Ethereum and some other altcoins, which we talked about. Now moving forward, uh, this was non-financial advice. This is a show that we do with uh, me, Ben in the Cryptoverse and Guy from Coin Bureau. And this was just uh, this episode uh, two was actually three weeks ago. And we just had one yesterday. And in this video, uh, we I asked the question because it was on my channel. I said, hey, are you guys buying anything right now? And um, smartly enough, I mean, both of these gentlemen said, no, they were not. And this was my answer. So just take a listen. Mine is a little bit different. I disagree with both of you. And I, I because I'm stubborn and I can't help it. And the thing is, I always look at it. I'm like, I know the, the, the what you just said, guy, and what Ben just talked about is, as far as the macro events, the things that are going on in crypto. I know it, and it makes sense. I certainly don't think that we have hit the bottom. I still think we have a little ways to go. If you look from, uh, again, from 2013 to 15, that was an 85% drop. 2017, 2018, it was an 84% drop. The biggest drop we had so far is 77%. I still think we go down to 10K or 12K Bitcoin. Having said all that, how many times have I heard or we have heard that it's a definite thing, it's going to happen, we're going to go through this recession, it's going to be awful? True. So I'm, I'm 90 plus percent sure but there's always this thing in my head that says rob you're not that smart you're gonna have to uh hedge your bet so i just do a little bit of dollar cost averaging like i call it uh this is micro dca i still get a little bitcoin every day a little ethereum every couple days and some alts once a week but it's not that much so these are just the things and like the days that we have a green day it works out okay so that was the very first question you know, and what do you got Rob, no. they say uh, they say they, the 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 pessimists sound mm. smart, but the bulls get rich, right? Like over, <laughs> over, over the long haul, over the long sure. haul, your strategy will probably work out very, very well. You know, even if we go down, right? And you'll probably sleep better by um, by having allocations and projects that you like than worrying about if they're going to constantly leave leave without you. You know. Yeah, so that was it three weeks ago. And I still stand at it. I, I, I'm not 100% sure where we're going. I don't know if we're going to uh, for a soft recession or a hard landing recession or we're going to hit recessions or not. I have, I think I know where we're going, but I'm never 100%. And just like I said in that video, I'm not that smart. I'm not smart enough to call it. There are so many indicators to look at. There's just no way to do it. And and for and for me, I mean, we're all just kind of guessing out here. I think this is what works for me. Now, this might not work for you. This is not financial advice. I can't tell you what to do. These are just the things that I'm doing. And that was uh, a time frame of three weeks ago. Now, moving forward, there was a video I put out uh, just two weeks ago. And this one 
it was called maximize your profits, taking profits with dollar cost averaging. And what I said in this video was this. I said, look, this is what I'm doing. I've been buying Bitcoin every day for $40. And I just went back to December 16th and I figured this will be a good time to take a little bit of profit. So again, I just laid it all out. I said, look, the price on December 16th, 2022 was 16,795. And I bought forty dollars, and then you can just see what the price was and what that Bitcoin equivalent. Now, Bitcoin equivalent, one Bitcoin is always one Bitcoin, but of course, to dollars, it's a little bit different because every day it fluctuates, right? So then, for the last sixteen, I mean, for uh, three weeks or so, uh, I said, okay, what I'm going to do is I paid a thousand dollars for this Bitcoin, and that's forty dollars every day, and then that Bitcoin equivalent was zero point zero five nine. I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell that Bitcoin because I paid a thousand and I sold it uh, actually a bit uh, farther down the road because it was uh, today. It is uh, February 4th. So that was two weeks ago. So towards the end of January when we were at you know, 21, 22, somewhere around, I forget. And uh, I made a whopping $239. And I don't know if I explained this correctly because everybody keeps saying that, Rob, why'd you sell all your Bitcoin? Why'd you sell all your Bitcoin? I didn't sell any Bitcoin. I sold from December 16th down to January 9th. The amount that I uh, purchased during that time, that's what I, I sold, 0 0.059. And I made a little bit of, of, uh, of uh, profit. Why did I do it? Well, first of all, I always talk about taking a little bit of profit. The second thing is I, I do it because I can roll that into other things. I could be other cryptos, whatever else I want, want to do. But the third thing, and I think the most important thing is that when the time comes to sell, I want to remember what it feels like to sell. My problem last time was I didn't sell enough and I watched everything start to collapse a little bit. I sold a good amount and you can watch the videos about what I sold and how much I sold and everything else. The problem was is that I kept listening to, you had to buy every dip and diamond hands and sometimes you just get a little, bit, uh, a little crazy with that. In all honesty, I just want to grease the wheels and have muscle memory. And remember like, okay, it wasn't that much, but I know how to do this because when the time comes, I will be selling. And uh, there's a video I put out of, uh, I talk about why I'm going to sell 80% of my crypto at what time, at what point, and what indicators. There's another big caveat to, to uh, make mention of, which is this. With dollar cost averaging, even though you're selling down the road, you're still buying. You're still buying. It's just like a farmer who is planting seeds. It's just that we have different seasons uh, when we can actually harvest. So I'm planting all these seeds back here. And at some point I want to harvest that. I don't ever have to. I can wait until 2025 or six or 2040. It doesn't really matter. But for here, that's what I did. But you're always, in with dollar cost averaging, I'm always buying at a little bit higher price. So that just to make that, cl that clear, that's what I did. I didn't sell everything. I just sold a little piece. Now, let's take a look at this. If we take a look at what I could have done, because I just made 239 bucks, which is not great because one of 23%, which is a good you know, profit for like a traditional market, but in crypto, it's kind of lame, let's be honest. So what would if I would have done this? What if I would have just said, you know what, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep Bitcoin until it goes to its all-time high. Well, 0 0.06 of Bitcoin if I would have sold at that point, when it was at 69,000 back to its all-time high, which who knows when that's going to be. Could be 2025, could be 2024, could be 2027, who knows? But if I waited a 69K, uh, 0 0.06 Bitcoin would have been worth 4,140. So the $1,000 that I, I uh, spent, I would have been a profit of 3,140. What if I waited till Bitcoin went to 100K? Well, I would have made 6,000. Minus $1,000, I've been in profit $5,000. And if Bitcoin went to 150K, and I'm not saying it's going to these, and I'm not telling you when it's going to, because I have no idea, but it would have been 9,000 minus 1,000, I would have had $8,000 in profit. So that is the long and the short of it about what could potentially happen. So the question always is, well, why couldn't you just wait? Why couldn't you just wait? I told you exactly why. Greasing the wheels, take a little bit of profit, not feeling that, that crazy feeling. And this is where we're at right now. Today, though, things change because we're going to start to actually DCA. And what I'm talking about is instead of micro DCAing, which I've been doing here at $40, now I'm just going to go back to what I usually would spend on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the other alts we're going to talk about in a little bit. So the question then becomes, well, why? 
Well, why now? And it's because there's, well, there's a couple of reasons actually. So I'm a big believer in the four year cycle. If you've uh, listened to the show, you know, I'm talking about this quite a bit. So again, everything starts with the having 2012, then 2013, uh, one year after the having been an all time high, this happened in 2013. Then there's a big monstrous dip or a correction. And then 2015 is a reset year where it's a, not a bad time to accumulate. Same thing happened in 2016, having 2017 all time high, then a big correction or a dip, and then a reset and not a bad time to accumulate. Then we go to 2020, having monstrous, well, reasonably monstrous all time high 21. And we saw a very brutal uh, dip or a correction. And now I believe we're in that, that reset year going into February. Now, moving on forward, hopefully this will happen, having all time high dip reset, but who knows? I mean, we could see a, a parabolic bull run in 2024 or maybe in 2028. I have no idea. But again, the longer that I'm in the game, I think the, the better off I am. And we've actually taken a look at this. If we just think about the four-year cycles, the, the closer you get to the bull run, the worse your returns are because you need that time to actually start to accumulate. So I did my job. And my job personally was to just kind of ride things out and just see how bad it could actually go. I could have, you know, value cost average and bought everything in at 30,000, but the percentages wouldn't have been there because it went down to 20. And then we went down to a low of around 17,600. So I think for me, I could be wrong. Now might be the time. And again, we took a look at this and said, okay, what if we would have gone back in history and we would have uh, invested on January 1st, 2018, which would be the first day of that dip or correction year and put in $100 every seven days for Bitcoin? Well, if I would have sold the very tippy top at 100, or excuse me, 69,000 or somewhere around there, I would have seven dexed what I put in. Not so great. Uh, but not too bad. If I waited until 2019, six and a half X, okay. And if I waited until 2020, four X. And if I waited on to the actual bull run year, 1.5, that's for Bitcoin. So again, the closer you get to the bull run, the usually, or sometimes, the less your actual profits are. Let's take a look at Ethereum. So Ethereum, again, same thing. In 2018, it would have been a 16 X. But if I would have waited, 2019, it would have been a 17 X. Again, buying $100, every seven days, 2020, 11X, 2021, a 2X, that's not too great. Take a look at Cardano. If I were to start in 2018, 35X, but a little bit uh, more risk, right? But in 2019, again, the reset year, 39X, 2020, 26X, 21 and 3X. And of course, I always wanna make mention of this and that is that just because your dollar cost averaging doesn't mean you're going to be a winner. There's some losers out there. This is salt, and this is, I call it a dash of salt. Dash is one of those solutions that we thought would be awesome. If you had a dollar cost average from 2018, you would have done a 3X, and that's not the great. And of course, salts, you wouldn't have really come back at all. So that's just the long and the short of it again. So then the question then is, well, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong and we do hit this this big, huge recession, or we don't, or we do. I still think we're, we're headed towards a recession. I still think Bitcoin could go a little bit lower. So how does that work out? Well, in all honesty, if we go up from here, well, I, you know, I micro DC8, I think I did okay. I bought some alts and as time goes on, I think it'll be pretty good. And especially from today, we start to, you know, go right back to our old, uh, same amounts of dollar cost averaging. If it goes up, great, I make some profits, probably not as good as if I would have uh, you know, fully dollar cost average and went buck wild. But again, I've got a lot more money to actually do that because I was holding off in for since May. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, eight, nine months essentially. And now I can put that money in. Now, if it, we go the opposite way in 2023 and we see a big, huge bear market, because for whatever reason, let's say inflation goes up, it's a little bit too sticky. And uh, uh, there's, a, there's a massive uh, increase, just like we saw in like the late 70s uh, with Volcker. Or maybe something comes out with regulation, or maybe the contagion hits, and uh, the things that happen with uh, Alameda Research and FTX, and it starts to you know, collapse onto Grayscale or Foundry, or, or, or just take your pick, and things just start, to, just start to go down. Again, there's too many factors to think about it. Great. 
because I saved all my money for the last nine months. Now, as things go down, I can do what's called dynamic DCA and just keep buying. The thing is, you have to understand is this, is that if we were going to zero, if crypto is going to zero, this would be a pretty awful play. Let's be honest, because you're just dumping, you're just throwing sand in the ocean. I don't think crypto and digital assets are going to zero. I think they're going to repeat in the four-year cycle. Maybe it takes a little longer, maybe it doesn't. But I still believe we've got a lot of runway to go. It just depends on our time frame for what it is. And that'll lead me to my last point, which is this. This is what I'm buying as far as altcoins. And I'm not going to say how much I'm buying or the frequency, but I will tell you that uh, Bitcoin, ETH, and Polygon, those are definitely uh, everydayers. And then uh, Link, Near, Cosmos, Avalanche, Algorand, Dot, and ADA. And the reason why is because I like layer one solutions, or in the case of Cosmos, I guess like a layer zero or whatever they uh, call it. But when I take a look at the upside, again, there's more risk as we go down the different rabbit holes or uh, farther down on the uh, market caps. But I will say what's interesting is that Bitcoin, I just, if you're looking to get massively rich, I mean, just be aware that from the price today, around 23,000, back to its all-time high, it's a 2.9x. ETH is about a 2.8x. Polygon is only 2.5. Link is 7.3. Near Protocol is 16.3. Cosmos is 3. AVAX is 6. Algorand is 10. Dot and ADA. But you have to understand, there's a lot of risk in that. So with Near, if you get into Near, just know that there's a lot more risk and they can go to zero. I mean, they not all these are winners. Remember, dash assault. So for me personally, it really all comes down to diversification and dealing with the risk that I have. And next question would be, well, Rob, where are you uh, buying all your crypto? It's on Coinbase. I'm an American citizen, so I got limited options, just how it is. And uh, I know that people may use Binance who are in, the, in Asian markets and uh, Europe. Great, use that because it's a lot cheaper. But for me, because I'm dollar cost averaging, things just kind of just keep going and going and going. There's a, uh, a fee for everyone, which are pretty astronomical, quite honestly. But I have enrolled in a program called uh, Coinbase One. And you pay like, it's either 19 bucks or 29 bucks. I always forget. And all your uh, fees are waived up to $10,000 per month. So for me, I don't, I'm not going to hit that threshold that quick. So uh, just you can look at that. I have no affiliate links with uh, with Coinbase, so you know how to find it. Just hopefully go the right one. And lastly, two last things is this. Remember this, is that crypto, it has some u utility cases, but it doesn't have killer u utility cases right now for everybody throughout the entire world. I understand about store of value. I understand uh, about transactions and, and smart contracts. I mean, I get it. But right now, for me personally, it's just best to diversify. So really, we, BCA to me is DDCA, diversify and dollar cost average. A lot of my funds right now are in cash. Stables a little bit, not that much. We have some DGEN plays, Masterworks, land, real estate's the big one, a little bit in the Amazon business, crypto, IRAs, and stocks. This is my portfolio. We will look different. My goals are not your goals. But the big thing I will say and leave you with this is that the easy part is buying. The hard part is selling. And that's why when we did NFA yesterday, I really had that. I precisely asked uh, Ben and Guy these specific questions about, are, do they have a plan in place? What are they doing? How are they going to execute that? If you don't have a plan right now, I have two. And you can take from this anything you want to. There is a link in the description. It's called why and when I'm selling 80% of all my crypto and the things that I'm looking at. Or if you want to, probably a better option, if you don't want to hunt around for everything, go to Dan Teaches Crypto. It's 100% free. And also, you don't have to deal with any kind of, uh, of ads. You don't have to deal with any kind of slowdowns. I use Vimeo. It's a premier uh, video upload service. So you don't have anything the, the things in the, in the middle. It only costs you an email. I don't even spam you. And then you can just take a look at my past uh, exit plan strategy, what I'm doing now, the different indicators that I have, I'll lay it out here and the video itself and so on and so forth. And that's it. So look, 
that was a little bit long, I, I know, but when we get into these, there's a lot of different minutia and things that we have to go over because if I don't say the things that are specific, I keep getting um, people in the comment section who are like, how dare Rob sell all his crypto? Or I don't understand this part or that part. And there's going to be some things I didn't say out perfectly, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, especially as we're starting to roll into the next Bitcoin halving, which uh, will happen next year, around March or April. But that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.